So one of the things you're going to have to have if you do wood ash nixtamalization of corn is the wood ash. Uh, in my house, we burn almost all hardwood, so I'm just going to take the ash directly out of my stove. This has been out a couple of days, so it's not hot. And it really needs cleaned out, so this is a good time. Maybe over time. Uh, way more wood ash but uh, next step I'll be back alright next thing we need to do is sift out some of the big stuff so here's that I don't really know if this is necessary but that's what I've seen people do so we'll do it too I don't know how much of this I need, but just a couple of cups. I think it's a cup of ash for every cup of corn. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's what I'm going to do. The last batch I did, I didn't sift it out, and it had chunks of, uh, charcoal floating in it which I don't think hurt anything but but you never know so this bunch will sift out a little but we'll be back here in a little bit with the cooking part okay bye all righty we're on to the next part of nixtamalization got a bag of uh, filled corn we packed up but for some reason the oxygen absorbers didn't didn't suck it down good so we're going to use two cups of that, just uh, feed corn from, uh, from the feed store. Then we have wood ash out of the stove. We're going to use two cups of it as well, roughly. Cover it with water. That was, what, four cups? I'm going to put a little more in it. All right. Two more cups. And we're going to put that on heat to boil. And once that boils for about three hours, we'll be back. And we've got the corn and wood ash up to a hard boil. Isn't that exciting? Yep, very exciting. The joys of nixtamalization. The corn went really orange for a little bit, so we'll see how it ends up. Be back in a little bit. So this has been boiling for about uh, three hours and the skin is pretty much gone it's cooked through it's mushy so I'm gonna call that done I'm gonna take this outside and rinse it with the garden hose because I don't want all that wood ash and stuff going down my pipes so I'll clean that out and we'll be back here in a little bit I guess this is something I should have mentioned. If I stir it up and pour the corn out, you can see the skins are off of it, which is what we're going for, is those skins sloughing off of there. So when I take this outside to rinse it off, most of those skins will be washed off. Or that's the goal anyway. So it really looks like hominy, so that's a win, I guess. 
Be back in a minute. All right, so it's rinsed off now. I did that outside and it's dark, so I didn't uh, didn't take it out and record it. But this is now Hominy. The skins are pretty much off of it. It's gotten quite a bit bigger than what it was. There's the original piece of corn and how big it is now. It's uh, kind of mushy now. I can figure out where the camera is. And it tastes like hominy or boiled corn. So I'm going to take this here in a minute and grind it up and turn it into tortillas. We'll see how that goes. Be back in a minute. All right, so I ran the hominy through a food processor so I could make tortilla batter, but I got it way too wet. So what I'm going to do is this cast iron right here. I, uh, I cooked some steaks a while ago. So I'm going to do like a, like a potato cake except with ground up maize. We'll see how that is. There's a lot of extra butter in there and onion and all the seasoning from the steak still on it, so they should be all right. Normally, if you do tortillas, you use a dry cast iron, but I messed up the batter, so, so we're going to do this instead. Hopefully, they'll stick together. This is an experiment, and if they don't, well, I'll just... Roll them up in the in the butter and steak drippings, and it should be good either way. If you want to see how to prepare them for actual corn tortillas, there's probably a million videos that do that way better than I do. Ooh, but look at all the buttery goodness in there. You can't beat that. Cleaning as I cook. Don't tell my wife I did this or she'll expect it every time. No idea how to leave these on there. How long to leave them. That was way too soon. But, oh well. But I'll fry these up and I'll be back in a minute. See how they show you how they are. All right. All right. So the first batch is done. Now these are cooked in. They didn't hold together very good, but they don't really have anything to hold them. I'm going to give my incredibly picky son the first bite. Probably pretty hot, so watch it. How is it? It is very, uh, not chewy. But is it, does it taste good? To me, like he said, I'm a picky eater, so no. No? <laughs> well, there you go. But they're corn fried in butter and steak drippings, so what are you going to do? Well, I was going to do it again. I think I would uh, season the batter a little better, but... I'm not really a cook so there you go corn nixtamalization made in you can look up why you put it through the process it's something to do with the nutrition stuff but I just thought it'd be something fun to try they taste all right so I'll call this a win y'all have a good time good night whatever we'll see ya